everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we're back for another brand new video. As you can tell by that delicious thick clickbaity tech, we're here to talk about some Rangers youth players. Players that could potentially break into the squad because every year or so, Rangers has a player that no one's really thought about or talked about. Everyone's talking about new signings, blah, blah, blah. But they rise from the youth academy, they steal our hearts like a Ross McCrory. Before that, it was Barry Mackay. Before that, Lewis McLeod. You could argue even David Bates himself. I know he came from another club, but he still rose from the ranks of the youth club with the squad. There's always these types of players, and I know how exciting it is to talk about Rangers rumours all the time, like Defoe and everything. Like, I get that, the, the appeal of that. But I think sometimes we need to appreciate what we actually do have and sort of look in at the club and say, listen, there's a couple of really talented youngsters. In fact, there's there's more than that. I'm going to do a wee group of five, if I'm honest with you. I'm just going to talk about five of them, just to sort of mention it in a video to give you my five. You're hopefully going to get involved down below and let me know your fives, maybe some of the players that I've missed. And there's obviously going to be some players we don't actually mention, but that is in no means saying that they aren't good enough or these are the five best players. These are just the five players that I think potentially could break into the squad in terms of the position they're playing, maybe we're slightly weak, or if they are genuinely really, really talented and they must, must play. Spoiler alert. So now that we've got all that out of the way, it's time to jump to the list, shall we? We'll start off with number five, and that is going to be Young. Aiden Wilson, centre-back. I know he's played a couple of games, I believe two games for Rangers at the end of last season or the season before. And the reason I actually say Aiden Wilson is we have lost a lot of centre-backs. The, the argument could be made that we never had any in the first place. But, you know, I think Bruno will leave. Cardozo should go. Um, David Bates is obviously uh, left to Hamburg. We've only really got... Scuttle. And as it stands just now, I think Aidan Wilson's got a massive, massive opportunity to play in a couple of games, getting his friendlies. Obviously, while we bring in a couple of players and work this centre-back partnership out, we've just not been able to do it. We've not found consistency, and it looks like we're rebuilding once again. So, with everyone out the door, I think Aidan Wilson could potentially steal some headlines again. You tall, really, really quick along the grass as well, and he showed some potential And when it came to reading the game. And with a natural leader on there, whether it's Scott or maybe Bruno Alves, whoever, whoever you bring in, a Kyle Bartley to sort of nurture him along, he could be what we would expect David Bates to be. And to be honest with you, if played half as good as David Bates did this season, I'd be very, very happy. And even with me saying that, I do expect him to spend the majority of the season on the bench, but when he does get a couple of game time, I expect him to put in a good, solid couple of performances, a lot like a young Ross McCrory done, and obviously the ginger David Bates. Shout out to Kyle Bradley, who actually just missed out on the list as well. I went with Aiden, but Kyle could be a sort of like for like if I'm honest with you, and hopefully gets a chance. I think Alone's more in line with where I think Kyle's going to go next, but Aiden Wilson, I believe, will be given an opportunity and potentially breaking into the squad. Moving on to number four, we're going to be looking at attacking player. He plays out in the right. His name's Serge Atake. I think everyone that clicked on this video knew this guy was probably going to be coming on the list. You might know him from the Florida Cup Invincible run. That's right. That's right. He was there. He was there. Um, very, very quick, talented football player. He can score goals as well. He can create goals. He can beat a player. Something I think we struggle with sometimes. Has a lot of pace. And as it stands just now, when you're looking at that right mid spot, we've only really got Daniel Candias that can play there. The one thing I think still a bit of a knock on Serge Atake is his sort of lean stature and um, would he cope with the physicality of the SPFL. That is a question that needs to be asked. But what I say is, give him a game. Let's find out what he can do. So let's jump over to number three now. We're actually going to be taking a step back from the offensive side of players to another defender. That's right, another defender. It's almost like we didn't have a defence last season. We're going to be looking at a left back. His name's going to be Miles Beerman. Obviously, he's had a good run in the side before. He has some up points, some obviously low points, given that silly penalty against Celtic, which I think he's too harshly criticised for. And I know, listen, I know he was away Queen of the South. I know he didn't ex exactly excel when he was there, but I think you play better with better players around you and I think with better coaching Miles Beerman could really turn it into something special because let's look at the left backs that we currently have just now Declan John that's it because Halliday no Hodson don't even start me and Lee Wallace where is he where's Waldo they're all gone at this point and the reason I say that is if you're looking at prototype of football players I think Miles Beerman and Declan John are very, very similar, and I think Declan John could nurture Miles Beerman to being a lot better player because they've got they share a lot of similarities. They're very, very quick. They're quite small in stature. They like to get forward. They like to get involved offensively. 
Defensively, they're both pretty poor, <laughs> if I'm being honest with you. But that Sonic can be coached. That's right, a better coaching system around him. So, yeah, that's why I'm going to go there. I think it's going to be uh, Declan John's understudy for the majority of the season. Playing out the odd cup games, everything like that. Develop as a football player. Obviously, was given a new contract for a reason. And I believe that's the place on football games next season. So, good luck to Miles Spearman as we move down to number two on the list. Apologies, by the way, if you're watching this video, it's been extremely sticky, especially at the start. There's nothing I can do. My computer's absolutely garbage. It's just not working with my camera anymore. Now that I've upgraded my equipment, my camera, I mean, my computer no longer works. So, yeah, I'm going to need to fix that for tomorrow. So, bear with me throughout today. And again, I greatly appreciate it. Like, shameless plug while you're equipment shite Craig thank you so let's just focus on number two on the list now it was between three people because I think everyone that's watching this video knows who my number one is I talk about them all the time um, so number two was a hard one because I had three I'm going to tell you the three I've got John Rossa I've got Jamie Barjonis and I have Stephen Kelly who I don't think gets enough credit I think he's I think he's special as well um, and I'm kind of going in my, in my head I'm going back and forth who do I want to talk about who do I want to talk about but if I'm being fair to that clickbait title Who's going to make the best impact or the potential impact? It's going to be Jordan Rosser, isn't it? I know he's basically brought in for the first team. But listen, he's been a youth player for the entire year. He's played there a lot. And he's obviously came up, had a very, very good game against Hibs. This could be his year. Can he stay fit? That is the question. We're all praying and hoping so. But if not, it is no doom and gloom in the midfield. Because we have got Jamie Barjonas who is threatening to break in at each and every single time. Give him a run of games. And Stephen Kelly, keep up the hard work, mate. It's starting to show. And before we jump over to number one, surprise, surprise, who do you think it is? Let me know down below. It's time to enjoy a sponsor break. So grab your refreshments. Here we go. Three, two, one. Sponsor break. <laughs> Even a crash won't stop me from making this video as we move to number one on CG Novo 92's list of five youth players that could potentially break into the squad next season. Everyone guess who it is, by the way, down in the comments. I'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. It is none other than Mr. Assist, Glenn Middleton. He runs the show each and every single youth game. Everyone can see it now. I've started posting up for the last three or four months. I've just been showing it on Twitter and Twitter. Look at this guy. When he plays, either assists or scores. The Twitter updates, 90% involves Middleton's name. Either he's running and causing something or there's no tweets. And isn't it just me wearing blue tinted glasses, by the way, when I say this kid has something special? Go and look at the reaction of the Norwich City fans when he left the club. You've never seen anything like it. It was like a bloodbath. But he's here now. He loves the Rangers. And he's number one on CG Novo's list. If you've not seen him before, if you've not paid too much attention to me on Twitter or anything like that, or not really heard us speaking about him in the podcast, if you haven't actually seen him playing, you're thinking, tell me a little bit more, I will, don't worry. He ships normally as a left winger, but I think he could play left or right, if I'm honest with you. He's an out-and-out -out winger. We've not really had one in for a very, very long time. And like I said, he's just fast. He's dynamic. He's just to watch him with the ball at his feet. It just looks like there's sun going to happen each and every single time. He's got the confidence just to flow by players left and right. I think everyone who's ever watched a youth game or anything like that can be very, very proud if they're signed up to the Rangers lot. Because this is what it's developing and helping develop. I know he's came up for Norwich, but this youth team has got round him and he's just taken a step up. He is ready. And I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't be surprised if he wins Young Player of the Year next year. I'm being deadly serious. Going to be my top five. Let's run through them really, really quickly for you. Just to recap. Number five is going to be Aidan Wilson. Number four, Serge Attacking. Number three is going to be Miles Beerman. Houston just misses out, by the way. Uh, moving on to number two, it's going to be Jordan Rosser. But number one player to steal the hearts of all the Rangers fans next year, Glenn Middleton. That is going to be today's video. I'm going to try and attempt to read out the comments from Twitter. But if they aren't there, you know why. I've obviously been CG Novo 92. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to be subscribing if you're new. Liking, dropping comments, all that cool stuff. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.